So, today, 4th of March, and we are not in a hall, in a concert hall or something like that. We are in my flat, <laughs> in a color rock flat, <laughs> cool. together with Lewis from Soul Doctor and now again Blind Man. Yep. Hi, nice to see you guys, and uh, it's good to be back in Germany, and uh, it's cool to be here in uh, Kale's flat. <laughs> really nice place, enjoying it. Yeah, we well, let's talk about now about something about the Japanese metal scene and the German metal scene, mm -hmm. and something about your career. You start with music when? How old you were? Um, uh, that was back when I was like uh, back in my teen teen days in Japan. Um, I used to play for many bands, uh, local bands, and some big bands, some small bands, uh, just all sorts of bands. And uh, I ended up joining uh, this band Blind Men, which we're going to be talking about right now. Um, that was kind of like my first real uh, hard rock heavy metal band. And uh, I played with them from 1997, I think, 97 or 98. And um, I played with them until 2002. And we had like um, records, not records, CDs and videos, what have you. We did tours all around Japan and um, things were going pretty good. But at some point I had to leave the band because of uh, some personal reasons. And uh, uh, since then I've uh, been playing in you know in various bands in japan again and then two years ago i ended up uh auditioning for soul doctor which is as probably people may know is a band from berlin with tommy hart on vocals great singer and uh i had the uh honored privilege of uh being the drummer for a soul doctor and um uh, so yeah that's the band that mm -hmm. my main band soul doctor um, since 2010 and uh, last year 2011 um, I happened to uh, be back in Japan and uh, I was just talking with the guys from Blind Men and their drummer just happened to quit the band and it happened to be kind of like a 10 year anniversary um, since we had a uh, record out of a major record company in Japan and so we kind of did this little reunion and that's what kind of brought me back into the band so currently i play for soul doctor and for blind man in japan mm -hmm. i'm a member again of blind man and uh we're working on our eighth ninth ninth that's i forgot the that's the eighth album no the, this one's this the, i think this one was the seventh okay. sorry i've been out of the band too long so <laughs> i kind of don't remember anyway i think we're working on our eighth album right now and that should be out in late summer maybe early fall and hopefully uh if we could try to get like a deal in europe uh the band might be able to come to europe and if that happens i hope we can play here in berlin i hope we can play all around europe and uh, uh yeah um you guys will be surprised to see what kind of music we have in japan because uh didn't sound really Japanese, right? <laughs> right. I listened to this album uh, some minutes ago. That's really, really cool. It doesn't sound like a typical Japanese band you might be, uh, sounds like. But it sounds like a little bit um, yeah, American style, like uh, Molly Hatchet, mm -hmm. Deep Purple, a mix of it. That's mm -hmm. really, really cool. Um, did you play drums all the time or do you play a lot of instruments too? Um, well, I'm basically just a drummer. I'm just a stupid drummer. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, basically, professionally, I've only played drums. Uh, when I was a kid, I uh, started out playing trumpet in the school band, but that didn't take me anywhere. Mm -hmm. But yeah, drums basically is what, um, you know, took me around everywhere. So yeah, I'm basically just a drummer. And how long do you practice in a day? Well, it depends, you know, I mean, sometimes where you when you're traveling and stuff like that, you don't get to um, really sit down on the drum set. But yeah, I mean, you know, I just... I don't really have a set time of how many hours I play every day, but if I don't get to play, I try to listen to music, you know, listen to good drummers and, you know, kind of practice mentally, mm -hmm. which is really important. Um, and uh, if not, when I'm back at home in Japan, I have like a set of practice drums at home and things like that, which I practice like, you know, sometimes I'd be there three or four hours. You know, if I don't have time, I'll still just do some basic stuff for 30 minutes. Um, all depending on what my schedule is. But yeah, I try to do as much practicing, as much playing as possible. Because as, you know, everybody knows, playing drums for rock and hard rock and heavy metal, is not, it's not easy. You got to, you know, keep up your 
you got to keep in shape. So, mm. I mean, I try to do as much as I can. I've heard that the drummer, when I go around in the world, they think about some rhythms and they think go and they go steps and, hmm, okay, that can be a good drum, uh, yeah, bass drum or like a good rhythm for a good song. It doesn't sound like you? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, when you're walking down the street and you hear some, some, somebody, you know, playing some music somewhere or some anything, you know, like just you said, your steps mm -hmm. happen to sound like some kind of rhythm. And you kind of think in your mind if, you know, if, if you have that creativity, that is, or if you have that likeness of rhythm and grooves and stuff like that, you know, you would think of what that can sound on a drum set or you know you just start you know doing something on your mm. on your knees or whatever when you're sitting down in a restaurant which most people don't like when you're you know they're like <laughs> cut it out and stuff like that but With a spoon. yeah yeah well I, tr i try to keep away from that because uh, people have taught me that's bad manners okay. <laughs> so i try to just do it on my lap or with my hands or something oh. but yeah so you didn't sit at school and play with pencils and... Uh, yes, I did. And the teacher always told me to stop. I did that at home and my mother used to tell me, can you cut that out, you know, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I guess all the drummers have been through that. Mm -hmm. um, do you have your own drum at home in Japan, in your flat? I mean, uh, when you think about Japan, you don't think that when you live in Tokyo or in a big mm -hmm. city, they, you get a small flat. Mm -hmm. Do you got enough space for... Um, A drum? Um, actually, in my own, um, we call it apartment, in my apartment, um, I do not have a real drum set. I just have a set of electric drums, mm -hmm. which I can practice with because uh, the Japanese housing situation is, you know, I mean, it's a big city. We don't have much space. Which city you live? Um, I live in Kawasaki, mm -hmm. as in the motorcycles, um, which is right out of Tokyo. It's right next to Tokyo. It's I can see Tokyo from my house. So um, it's it's pretty packed, you know. The population is, you know, large, mm. many people, small houses. I have to just use an electric drum set at home, but of course I do have um, my own drum set, uh, which is currently in the uh, van for <laughs> the blind man van, <laughs> because when we do shows we um, use it. I have a I'm a I'm endorsed with Yamaha, mm -hmm. so I have uh, one Yamaha kit in japan and luckily when i play with soul doctor yamaha in europe has been um supportive enough to let me use one of their sets cool. which you may have seen in some pictures this is really cool looking red sparkling yeah. uh drum set it's a maple custom uh which i use uh exclusively in europe mm. do you have some drummers in your mind uh, which you um think about okay i will I would like to be like there, like uh, Mike Tirana from Excel Repel and Tire, or mm -hmm. he's one of the my famous drummer. Nothing, okay, you are also mm -hmm. good drummer. But I mean, um, do you have someone that you prefer? Um, I don't have like one like particular person, but um, there are many drummers that I really respect and I really look up to. Um, one really cool drummer that I've always liked since I was in high school was uh, Frankie Bonelli from quiet riot um he's a he has a great groove and uh you know he he has a great sound and for me it's more about like groove and sound and how good you know you feel listening to this guy playing you know the drums mm. um pat torpy from mr big is another one um a whole lot of drummers uh you know but basically it's uh, eric singer from kiss Uh, or Badlands, one of my favorite bands, mm -hmm. um, drummers like that. And I kind of realized there was one thing I found. Um, uh, there's a common thing in all these drummers that I like is that all the drummers I like are usually influenced by uh, John Bonham. Mm. So it's like John Bonham and then these drummers that I listen to. And then I'm kind of under that. So I'm kind of like the grandchild generation <laughs> of, yeah. uh, of Bonzo. Yeah. yeah. So it's... And in that sense, I guess one of my other favorite drummers would be Jason Bonham because, I mean, he's, you know, mm. he's a son of John Bonham. And uh, he obviously has taken the good parts of his father and uh, kind of, you know, put a modern touch to it. Mm. So, yeah, those are kind of like my heroes, my um, drummers that I respect. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, Japanese musicians? Do you know so many bands which got uh, um, success here in Europe? 
Um, well, you know, unfortunately, there are many great bands in Japan, like Blind Man. Blind Man um, is a great band from Japan. Um, but I think in the European market, or like even in the United States, um, everybody thinks of loudness, you know, Akira Takasaki. Um, and it's been that way since the 80s, maybe with the exception of Vow Wow. Uh, which played in uh, Britain, mm -hmm. uh, also EZO, which played in the States. Um, and now there are more like what they call the visual metal bands, which um, are kind of popular in Europe. But I think in the real metal scene, metal field, it's always been loudness. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't changed for, what, 30 years now? Close to 30 years. And um, it's good, but it's also not good in the sense that, uh, you know, we there are many bands in Japan and we should export these bands more to Europe and uh, the United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the reason what I, why I'm asking, because, mm -hmm. you know, so many bands like Guns N' Roses or some other bands which recording DVDs in Japan, mm -hmm. while they think about, yeah, there are so many successful our bands, but you never heard a Japanese band come to Europe and make a recording there. Do you know why? Um, well, I think there are many reasons, and uh, one can be the language barrier, uh, because a lot of people in Japan don't speak English. Mm -hmm. And uh, that can be one reason why um, things kind of don't work out for Japanese bands. And um, it's really strange in Japan, because we have many metal bands, but the listeners in Japan don't want to listen to much Japanese local bands. They listen to like European bands, American bands. They listen to Guns N' Roses. They listen to, um, you know, Blind Guardian. They listen to uh, what? All, all the big bands over here, you know, everything. Halloween. Um, and they love that stuff. But um, somehow they don't want to, they don't really have an interest in local bands, which is kind of strange, but that's kind of, um, how it is in Japan. So, um, yeah, I think it would be good that uh, more Japanese bands would come out to Europe to prove that, you know, they can do music, that they have good stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of like one example I'm trying to make by, you know, showing even if you're in Japan, if you're Japanese, well, okay, I'm only half Japanese. I, I may be cheating in a way, but um, I live in Japan. I grew up in Japan. I speak Japanese uh, and I speak English. That's kind of like an extra thing. But still, that's where I'm from. And I would like to show people that, you know, Japanese people can come out to Europe or the States and, you know, rock the people over here out, you know? Oh, maybe blind man. I will prefer it when they come. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Um, how about the um, label management and music management in Japan? Is it a little different to uh, yeah, Germany? Um, I would say there is a little difference. Um, and of course, that depends on what kind of band you're in. When you're in like a famous pop band um, and you're selling millions of records, you know, then, you know, I guess everywhere it's kind of the same. But um, a lot of metal bands in Japan are more um, self-managed. Mm -hmm. So it's not like there's, especially when it's to metal music, you know, it's it's not like there's a big metal um management agency like you don't have something like bottom row or you don't have anything like uh what was it like sanctuary or mm. stuff like that um there's not much for metal you know most of the bands are just self-managed and uh labels the same thing it's more like one-shot deals um and there is not really like uh um special what do you call it like exclusive label for metal um, only if it's like independent, mm. you know, like the major record companies are all like, you know, they do mostly pop music and, you know, all the popular stuff. They don't really have like a metal label when it's major. Mm. Um, but, you know, you'd have to go to like really small independent labels. But I've heard that uh, some German bands go to Japanese and release their album there mm -hmm. because it's cheaper and uh, easier to um, promote them from there. Mm -hmm. Well, um, that's a different thing. That's like, let's say, um, like for Soul Doctor, what happens is they have a label in Germany and then what they do in Japan is they just license it. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a license deal. Um, and they, you know, the Japanese record company would publish their Japanese version of, let's say, a Soul Doctor album or, you know, whatever band like Halloween or something mm -hmm. would have their Japanese version on a Japanese label. 
and that's basically just licensing so it's kind of like a different um it's a different situation from like what domestic bands would be doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what about the music industry in japan um what do you listen there is it uh, normally the mainstream music like lady um, gaga or something like that or is it a real <clears throat> national traditional sounds um the music scene is in japan is very strange i would say i wouldn't say strange that's kind of being rude but um of course there is like a whole group of people that listen to like lady gaga or you know all the popular american music british music you know we have big festivals where like red hot chili peppers is headlining cold play is headlining or uh things like that we have that every year you know big festivals you know jesus priest was in japan the other day um and all that stuff but when it comes to like japanese music um a lot of it is like um anime related mm -hmm. and that's one and then the other one would be like japanese there's a lot of like japanese hip-hop going on right now and i think one of the biggest things would be um like idols we have like um idols you know yeah. idol groups you know these teenage girls like maybe like 15 or 20 teenage girls wearing the same uniform mm -hmm. and they're like all dancing on stage and you know singing these girly pop songs like spice girls <laughs> um no actually not you might want to check it out there's like this big the biggest thing right now in japan is called akb48 you just just google it just look it in um uh youtube and you'll see what it is you know yeah. it's like just a group of girls um and they're like all dancing and it's like so popular in japan just men are just go they go crazy for this stuff okay and it sells really really good so that's kind of like the mainstream in japan right now and then the other version would be like you know uh like kind of like a backstreet boys kind of thing which the girls would love you know mm. it's all about like idol music and what about the old generation what they listen to um, old generation people, well, there are a whole bunch of people that listen to like uh, rock music from the States or Europe. Um, other people would listen to, you know, the old school Japanese pop. And then there's also like a traditional Japanese music called Enka, which is more like folk music, Japanese folk or mm -hmm. Japanese country music, maybe, you know, oh, okay. and that's more for like the older people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a good idea because German people or German young generation like the enemy. Maybe there's a good chance to make it like as a gorilla, uh, gorillas. Do you know them? No. That's a um, Clint Eastwood sound. And, mm -hmm. um, they're just doing a comic uh, video. No person behind. Mm -hmm. um, some years ago, uh, they looked like... As, um, yeah. How can I say? They come out and mm -hmm. said, uh, yeah, that we are. That's uh, us. But, um, I mean, maybe that's a good idea for a metal band we do uh, anime video yeah yeah I and think, they come to yeah, that could germany be maybe. yeah that could be a good idea i mean i've realized that a lot of european people really like the japanese pop culture and you know i've, I've actually seen a lot of these anime related bands and musicians coming to europe and you know playing in like japan expo and things mm. like that so you know maybe that might be a idea of kind of incorporating that kind of culture into metal music that that might work and i think there's some bands in japan that are like metal and anime you know kind of like half and half which you know maybe that might be like an interesting um kind of music for european people maybe you know in the future um you know you can check out for those kind of stuff you know I'm or maybe sure. or maybe something like a anime series with just metal sound yeah i mean <laughs> anything can work you know mm. there can be many possibilities What about um, the clubs in uh, Japan? Um, I mean, Hard Rock Cafe is everywhere. Yeah. But what about the underground? Is there a special club or special locations which you prefer to go? Well, um, it's a little bit different in Japan. Um, like when you have like a music club, you know, bands play and then you can also drink and you can eat, mm. right? In Europe or the States. Like, you know, so-and-so so -so bar and grill or, you know you have the food and the drinks and the music but in japan we have like a whole bunch of venues you know clubs that's only for music you know so you don't go in there and eat and drink mm. you just go to watch the music or watch the band play listen to the music and after the music's done you go home you know mm. and um it's a little bit different we have like so we call them live houses mm -hmm. 
it's just a club you know i mean it looks like a club but only difference is people don't you know you have maybe one or two two drinks but you don't really you know sit down and have a beer and eat some you know you don't eat pomace or anything you know <laughs> it's like you, you just go to see the music okay and um that's kind of like the difference um so let's say if a band like my friend is playing somewhere yeah I'd just go to see them at like a local club and you know it's like hi bye maybe have a beer outside you know mm -hmm. talk a little bit and go home you know so it's there's not really like a socializing um facility i would say like there is over here where you know after the show you just sit there and drink beer until five in the morning you know okay so, so um you don't have a chance to drink a beer uh, when the show go or well of course you can buy a beer you know but it's like you know it's you don't have any seats or tables where you can sit down and you know talk to people you know it's more and how like, big how big are the locations well, how many people go in that uh, well it can be anywhere from like a hundred like or even 50 people to 300 400 500 just so depending. small i think uh about uh, okay two thousand or three thousand um those would be like more like really you know big nice venues like you know um like club cheetah in kawasaki um where we have this thrash dom domination festival oh, okay. every year um that um is more of like a thousand two thousand seater place but mm -hmm. um i'm just talking about regular you know local clubs mm -hmm. mostly that can be from 50 to 300 or 400 and they're like just in tokyo they're probably like 200 or 300 different clubs like that okay and every night there's a band playing not a band but maybe five or six bands on the bill mm -hmm. you know everything from reggae to rock to metal to everything and it's all mixed up you know so It's the same like here in Berlin. You've got so many locations yeah. and mm -hmm. you can choose between 20 right. concerts in the evening. And it's not like there's a metal club, you know. I mean, maybe there's some clubs that are more to the hard side of music, mm -hmm. but, you know, they try to just mix everything up so that they could get more people to come. You know, it's mm -hmm. not like if you have a metal venue, you know, not many people will come maybe. You know, you would try to make it versatile, you know rock and everything you know rap yeah. metal everything together so you get more people to come and what about the karaoke clubs uh, um, did they sing so many uh yeah. yeah that's something that you think about when you hear japan i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. got so many karaoke and did they sing uh, so many uh, rock songs or just uh, yeah typical uh, songs um that's another big culture in japan karaoke clubs and or pubs or little rooms that you rent um, you know, there are like millions of them, you know, and all the businessmen after work, they go and sing karaoke. All these girls just, you know, af you know, after partying, they would go sing until, oh, that's, um, that's the way to, um, for Japanese people to release their stress, oh, you know, okay. um, that's kind of like a, you know, way of getting your frustrations out, you know, just taking the microphone and singing and people would sing like mainly pop songs. Japanese popular pop and like the AKB stuff, you know, <laughs> they would be doing that or they would be singing like old traditional folk or country music, the Enka music mm. sometimes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, that's Japanese culture, karaoke, everybody goes, you know, mm. um, except me, I don't like karaoke, <laughs> you know, I never <laughs> go. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really popular. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um, something I think that many people are interesting are in, uh, is like the Japanese beer. What kind of beer you got in Japanese? Um, beer. Yeah, Japanese beer is really good. We have, um, I think the three main um, beers would be Sapporo beer, Kirin beer, and uh, Asahi is like the main beers. Mm -hmm. And I personally like Kirin beer. Kirin beer is like really good. Um, but being in Germany... I think German beer is really good too. I like Bit Bitburger. Mm -hmm. is really is one of my favorites. Okay. Uh huh. But still, yeah, Japanese beer is really good. We have, um, you know, every year we have some different types of beer, but it's mainly the three companies, and they make different kinds of beers. Mm -hmm. So you know, every summer we do have different, you know, like a light version. Maybe now we have lots of alcohol-free. Um, you know, we'd have uh, dark beer, we'd have light beer, whatever. You know, it's like 
Um, mainly the three companies making like different kinds of products. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, what about uh, the prices in Japan? Um, what kind of entry you have to pay for a concert or what have you pay for um, a CD? Is it a different between to Germany or to Europe or is it yes. is it cheaper or expensive? I'd say Japan is more expensive. Really? Yeah, let's say for CD, if it's Japanese published CDs, it'd be around like 22 euros maybe, mm -hmm. um, about, for an album, new. And um, let's say if you want to go see a show, just a local band in a local club would be like 20 euros. 20 euros? Yeah, and then, okay. and then when you're looking at Japanese professional bands in a club, maybe 40 euros mm -hmm. and then when you're like going to see bands from europe mm -hmm. uh in a big club maybe it would be uh like 60 euros okay. and when you go to see like uh lady gaga in a big stadium it would be maybe 80 90 100 euros and how many euros you earn for your work um i think the average What's the average? I think the average was, um, I'm trying to think of my mathematics right here. Um, monthly would be like maybe, um, hold on, three, maybe 3,000 to 5,000 euros would so, be like av average. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay that's, I, I that's hope I got my numbers right. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is it in yen? Uh, yen would be like uh, 300,000 yen to 500,000 yen. That sounds really, really big, uh, many things, uh, many money. But yeah, when, you, when, you, when you change it to euros, it's mm -hmm. not so much. Okay, no. 3,000 euros, it's for German people really, really much. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of like, that's kind of the average. Um, yeah, between 300 and 500. No, 3,000 and 5,000, I would say. What would you say is the big difference in the music between the Japanese and the uh, German music? Um, for metal or yeah, just... For Let's say for metal, yeah. Hmm. Um, I think it's pretty similar because um, Japanese metal fans like a lot of European, you know, like melodic speed metal is like really popular. You know, bands that are fast, that have a lot of guitars... Mm -hmm fast guitars and you know like especially like twin guitars they love it you know and um, you know blind man is not that kind of band but we're more like you know old school classic rock kind of type of band but i think like a lot of bands um a lot, sorry a lot of listeners in japan really like the fast stuff twin leads high you know high tone vocals mm -hmm. that kind of stuff so that's why halloween you know bands like halloween are like really popular yeah You know. And what about the radio stations in Japan? Do they play um, mm. the, the music of the metal scene or do they say, no, not for us? Well, um, there's one thing um, people have to understand because uh, many people ask me about radio in Japan. And I would say there's not really a big scene for radio. We don't have too many radio stations. Okay. And uh, let's say just in Tokyo for FM, It would be like, what, five stations or something, you know? And people don't really listen to that much. I, I would say people don't listen to that much radio in Japan. And most of these FM stations would be, like, really big um, that, uh, you know, in order to have your uh, music played, you have to, you know, pay for advertisements. It's all mm -hmm. the po political stuff. You know, so big record companies are that they can afford to have, you know, pay for advertisement for, like, Lady Gaga to be played. And stuff like that, but um, you can't really go up to them and say, "Hey, um, yeah, this blind man, can you list? Can you put this on the radio?" They'd be like, "Oh, ask your record company to pay us some money." You know, it's okay. like stuff like that. It's all the po politics, and um, we do have small radio stations that are only like really local, just in the neighborhood, maybe you know, just in the city, in this one city or one neighborhood, mm -hmm. which sometimes they can, you know, put your music on, but. You only have a few people listening to it because it's just one small city or one small town, maybe, you mm. know. Okay. So there's not really a big radio scene, I would say. It's more of like um, just the big record companies um, with 
the big radio stations and that's kind of like a it's the same as tv you know so for japanese metal bands um is it diff um really really good that the internet is growing up and you can use it uh, via yeah, youtube yeah. or facebook or something like that because in germany many people say, uh, said oh man so many bands in the internet i cannot decide which band i want to listen right. to mm -hmm. but for the japanese uh, i think you think about let's that's really good um, yeah, I think it's a good chance for bands in Japan. Um, you know, lots of bands are starting to use, well, MySpace, Facebook, uh, YouTube, putting their videos on YouTube, um, and things like that, you know. Um, I think many bands are utilizing, they're using internet in a good way, mm -hmm. and that's bringing more promotion for them. But they still have to take that step of being able to um, bring their music out of the country mm. i think internet is good for using that but you also have to physically go out of the country too mm -hmm. you know you can't just use internet only you know you have to use internet and you know physical you know being in europe being in the states you mm. know um and stuff like that and what about the city selling i mean japanese is one of the high-tech uh, countries in the world more electronic more mp3 and mp4 and everything like that Do you have some scene in the, in Japanese which uh, collect the CDs or vinyls? Um, actually, now the sales for CD is like really going down, uh, same as everywhere in the world. And um, but I guess people that listen to rock music still like to buy CDs, you know, because they like to have cool. the album cover and the artwork and the Booklet, CD and yeah. everything. Um, although a lot of the young people in Japan have been um, downloading music from like iTunes or like also we have um, a big scene uh, a big market where you download like ringtones mm. on your mobiles and kind of like not just ringtones but you also can download a whole song on your mobile phone mm. and you can listen to it on your mobile you know just by plugging in some earphones and it's the same like here yeah I think it's going on everywhere mm. um, younger people kind of you know they just buy the singles you know if It's, if there's a single on TV that's like really popular, they would just download that instead of buying an album. Mm -hmm. You know, like rock people, like metal people like to buy an album. You want your 10 songs, you want your, you know, 10 songs and a bonus track, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think the younger people just want the single. Yeah. They just want that one song and they're satisfied. So they just go for downloading because it's so much cheaper. Mm -hmm. So I think in that sense, it's kind of like the same in Japan as everywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. And what about the clothes uh, in the metal scene in Japan? Is it the same like here that you're wearing uh, with patches, a rest with patches, or uh, long hair? And yeah, or is it like the hair metal scene? Because Japanese people, I think, are really fantastic in to style the hair, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, well, the old school metal people still have their hair long. You see a lot of real like metal, you know, hardcore metal guys with their patches and their ripped jean jacket mm. and everything, you know, denim jackets and everything. And uh, they'd be wearing leather and everything. But um, it's becoming, you know, that's kind of like um, you don't see too many people like that anymore. Um, but there are still people that are really into it that wear that kind of stuff. Um, I would say the younger generation are more to the gothic side maybe oh, okay. um i mean it's not really gothic but the lolitas yeah that's one too you know the anime related like the bands you know they would like have um really you know they'd be makeup like girls and they'd be like really you know i mean and they even smell good you know i mean it's like whoa <laughs> what kind of perfume do you wear and these are guys you know and yeah. they have like really really like beautiful blonde hair beautiful green hair beautiful blue hair and they have all this lace stuff and and they look really good their hair is like all you know um they have like a hairdo that's like really measured by the millimeter yeah. and everything like that um th that's a different scene that's not really metal but mm. um um a lot of the younger bands kind of have more of a, a visual Uh, concept mm. with their looks and what about the crowd in the concert i mean when you when i see uh, some new concert uh, videos you see all the people with the mobile phones in the air filming the concerts and stand in the crowd with a suit 
Yeah, yeah. Um, in Japan, um, actually, the mobile phones and stuff like that, they try to restrict it. They say no pictures and everything. And if you take pictures, there's security and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So compared to like some countries, I think we there's more, um, there's less mobile phones in the air. Okay. But yes, we do see a lot of um, men um, just coming off of work. You know, after work, they'd come to a concert and they'd be wearing their neckties and and their suits and they'd still be headbanging, you know. So headbanging is also famous in Japan? Oh, yeah, of course. That's I think that's universal. When I see some videos, that's just the first row and then all the people stand, hmm, and maybe some screaming or something like that. Um, you know, it depends on what you're watching because, like, you know, if you're going to go see Lady Gaga, everybody's yeah. going to be clapping their hands like this. But, yeah. man, if you, like, we had, like, you know, thrash metal stuff, you know, Testament, Exodus, uh, Destruction, yeah. Creator, all that, come to Japan and people, they, they mosh, you know. It's like, they really mosh. They stage dive. It's the same as Europe, you know. It's... um people do that stuff too you know it's not like everybody's sitting down i mean long time ago like when kiss first went to japan mm-hmm. everybody had to sit down and they had to climb you know it's like if you stand up security would say sit down yeah there were so many so yeah. police inside the concert yeah yeah, yeah yeah there's like like really um hardcore security there and it's like you got to sit down but oh. that changed over like the past 30 years and um people do stage diving their mosh pits People headbang, you know, people, you know, do everything now. It's the same. So Japanese is more often for, um, you know, the crowd and for the feeling of the metal scene. Yeah, I mean, they they really, you know, it's not like they... There are some people that are sitting in the back that are, you know, like the metal police, we call them, you know. Mm. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, just fast guitar, blah, 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 yeah. But then there are other people that are just, you know, yeah, let's just have fun, you know. Mm. And, you know, I think it's the same as what you see over here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Louis, then I will thank you. Yep. And um, that was a great uh, yeah, experience. Thank and you for having me here. Yes. And yeah, hope to be back with uh, yeah, Soul Doctor still going on. Um, we still don't really have a schedule for that, but, uh, you know, I'll be back in Europe um, now and then, um, whether it will be with uh, the German man or with Blind Man. Um, you know, in either case, I'll be back here and hope to, you know, keep rocking here. And to all Japanese fans, Listen to your own music. Support your local bands. Yeah. That's really important. <laughs> yep. And uh, yeah, everybody in uh, Europe too. Just remember there are some cool bands in Japan. Um, and uh, hopefully maybe Kale can introduce some of these cool bands. And, you know, I'm going to try to help him find some cool, more cool bands from Japan. And uh, yeah, maybe you can have some tours over here with Japanese bands. Maybe. And uh, you may find another favorite band. So, you know, look out. Louis, enjoy your time in Germany. Yeah, thank you very much. You. And goodbye. Yeah, danke schön. <laughs> so, hi, everybody. This is Louis Sesto from Soul Doctor and Blind Man. Um, well, I'm here today in Berlin to teach you some, uh, a few, uh, Japanese words since that's where I'm from. Um, so yeah, the most important thing you would like to do when you get to Japan, you meet a friend, um, you want to say, hello, my name is Louis, right? That's the first thing you want to say. So in Japanese, hello, my name is Louis would be, konnichiwa, watashi wa Luis desu. Konnichiwa. That's one. Uh, what do we have here next? I'm from Berlin. Watashi wa Berlin kara kimashita. Watashi wa Berlin kara kimashita. And next, uh, useful one. Where is the hotel? Where is the hotel? Hotel wa doko desu ka? Hotel wa doko desu ka? And, uh, I'm I'm 25 years old, which I'm not, but I'm 25 years old. Watashi wa 25 sai desu. Watashi wa 25 sai desu. And just two simple ones, two more simple ones. Goodbye, as everybody knows, is sayonara. 
and thank you. Arigatou gozaimasu. Yeah? Arigatou gozaimasu. And for all you German people, this is one thing you want to remember. In Japanese or in German, you always say, no, you always say, aso. Yeah? Aso in Japanese is aso. Same thing. Drink beer. Um, beer, if you want to have beer in Japan, um, if you want to say ein Bier, you have to say Biru kudasai. Biru kudasai. Okay? That's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. Sayonara.